Do you want to learn the most standard build order for one of the most powerful civilizations in the game at the moment? Well, take my hand and let's do this. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the battlefield. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and click that play button. Now, the 1v1 standard BO for China. So we're going to be showing, or I'm going to be showing you, a nice standard build order for a naked fast fortress. Now, if you don't know what that means, it means you've got to get to age three as quickly as possible. And I've got to say, this is one of the most popular and most common build orders for China, but it is one of the most powerful at the moment. And easy to learn as well now a lot of people are probably going to be saying widgie what about the h2 what about the h2 china isn't that a good thing to go for and yes it is but it does require a lot of macro sort of adjustment and timing and sometimes you know it can be a little bit difficult to get it online and get it going so without further ado what we're going to be doing here is we're immediately going to be building a trade post so first thing you want to do with your explorer is get them straight to the tp and then you want three villages on wood and the rest on food now of course you make sure to gather up your crates at the start of the game and that's pretty much all you got to worry about quite straightforward three villas on wood every Body else on food and when you've got 180 wood you're going to be wanting to build a village now the village placement is quite crucial you're going to want to put it sort of between a gold mine and a tc don't put it on the further outer reaches here you want to kind of put it around here and the main reason you want to do that is because as china you can garrison your villagers in villages which means that if you do get raided let's say you're playing against germany or maybe playing against russia an aggressive civilization you're going to want to sometimes be able to put those fills into your villages so once you build that village you should have enough for your first card and the first card is going to be the northern refugees and that is going to muster one villager from your village and one villager from your tc so you're going to get two villages and what i suggest you don't have to all the time but what i do suggest is that you actually try and bring in uh, a second hunt potentially because you are going for a naked ff which means that you are going to be vulnerable in the early part of the game that is the downside of this strategy is that you may get some early pressure and you want to make sure that you have your resources as close to your tc as possible so that you can play as defensive as possible now just to confirm, I'm not going to be gathering any treasures in this build order. So my timings may be slightly slower because I'm not actually using my explorer here to gather any resources. So what you're going to need to do is simply just keep getting vills until you have 15 of them. And at that point, you should be closer to building your wonder. And as you know, uh, China is an Asian civilization, so you need to build a wonder to age up. And we're going to be selecting the summer palace once we have enough food. And you will get your second card available to you. And that is going to be T Export. Now, we're still going to use this card. It has recently been nerfed in the latest patch. And this will ship a consulate rickshaw and 100 export as well to spend. And we are going to be allying with Russia. And the reason that is, is because we get a nice uh, blockhouse rickshaw that we can use. And we want to put that close to our TC so that we can use it as sort of like an outpost to help us play as defensive as possible early on. So you can see here now that we're going to be getting the Summer Palace down. And as I say, I really recommend to build this pretty much as close to the TC as you can. Don't build it too close because you will get unit pathing issues if you do get attacked. So just try and build it uh, sort of similar to how I've done it here, not too far away. And you can see now that the consulate rickshaw has come out as well. And I'm starting to actually get a third hunt in now as we transition. Now, when we're transitioning, what we want to be doing is we want to be transitioning to gather 300 gold in total and also to get the 1200 food. The reason that is, is because the 300 gold plus the 700, which we're going to get when we get into age two, equals your thousand gold. And of course, you're going to be wanting to gather up 1200 food so that you can age up to age three. So you can see I've kind of got around four or five villages on gold here, and I'm just making sure that I bring my hunts in. Really, really important. Do not let your hunts stray far because you will pretty much have nothing to defend against it in the early stages of the game. You must not be very good at the multitasking. Like Napoleon needs to just, uh, needs to zip it for a bit. Uh, we're doing absolutely fine. So you can see here, just using my explorers just to uh, sort of explore the map, basically. That's kind of what they're there to do. And that's pretty much it, really. You just want to be herding, maintaining it well. And when you do actually get to the next stage, the age up is actually going to give you 400 food. So really, this is great. This is why the FF or the Fast Fortress is really, really good for China. 
because you get some great resources. So you can see now that I've actually mined 300 gold now. So I'm going to start to move those bills off. And immediately my first card straight in is 700 coin. Also, something to remember is do not forget to ship your... Do not forget to ship your blockhouse wagon. I was actually quite late here. You can actually do it a little bit quicker than that. You can see I've got a little bit of export left. So when you have 250 export down here, make sure that you click the button to get your consulate rickshaw, sorry, your blockhouse rickshaw to come out. And that's pretty much it. One thing to note on the Summer Palace, um, over time, you will get a banner army for free. And at the moment, it always defaults to the free standard army, which is a step rider uh, and shoe canoe combination. Now, you can change that early to Old Han, which is a pikeman and shoe canoe. That might be quite good if you're thinking that you might be getting raided, for example. Having those extra units can be really, really useful and they can counter cavalry very, very well. And also musketeers as well. So you can see now my 700 coin has come in and I'm going to be gathering that up and boom, we're ready to age up and immediately... And we are immediately ready to get our wonder down to get from age two to age three. Now, big thing here is what wonder do you go for? And I'm going to say go for the Confucian Academy. If you know that you're going to get pressured or you're already getting pressured, I would go for the Confucian Academy. And the reason that is, is because when you build it, out pop eight arquebusiers, which are your skirmish unit. And also over time, you get the Flying Crows for free, which is a fantastic siege unit. They're very good at buildings. They're actually pretty damn good at infantry units as well. So the Confucian Academy is going to be most of the time your go-to. So you can have a really hard hitting early age three with a bunch of units. However, sometimes I like to go for the Porcelain Tower. And the Porcelain Tower is essentially a factory, like it's a Euro factory. And it's really, really good, especially for getting you a decent wood income. And you can basically switch the resource to whatever you want. You can have mixed, you can have food, wood, gold, and it's pretty much i think it's equivalent to around 10 to 12 villagers so it's a super super eco heavy wonder building and i i recommend that as well but it depends on what kind of civilization you're playing against and how aggressive they've been so far and what kind of route you want to take but what i would suggest is if you're just learning this go for the confucian but just keep in mind your wood income because the next card that i'm going to be getting is 700 wood so that's the next card because we want to use that card to start to get some more infrastructure down because we're a little bare at the moment. We have no eco upgrades, no market upgrades. So the minute you start building this Confucian Academy, you're going to want to just start macroing food and gold because your next card is going to be 700 wood. So you don't really need to worry too much about chopping wood. Just worry about food and gold so you're ready to get your first banner army out when you get into age Three. And also on the consulate side, you want to be thinking about switching that consulate to a desired new ally. You do not really want to stick with Russia for too long. Russia is mainly just used for the blockhouse early on. And then you want to ditch that and you want to spend the export to be able to get a new ally. And remember, allying up costs you 100, con uh, 100 export. So make sure that you actually have enough export before you end your relations. So now my 700 wood has come in. Fantastic. So I'm going to start collecting that. And that is basically going to be used to build a village to maintain your population. You can also use it to build a market and get some market tech. So you start improving your eco and that's going to help you in the long term. And you can see here my second village is going behind here because I know that I've got my hunts here. And there we go. We've now aged up and we've got our first banner army from the Summer Palace, which is the Step Rider. Now, for the consulates, who you ally with after you've ditched Russia? Many options you can do. I like to go German allies. Now, I only like to go German allies if I've gone for Confucian Academy. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the German allies is a very economic centric ally that you go for because it has options for food, wood and gold trickles that you can spend with export. That will really help with the lack of a porcelain tower. And also it the passive effect of, of going with them reduces the cost of your banner armies. So it's very beneficial because going for the Confucian Academy means you sacrifice a lot of eco because you haven't gone for the porcelain tower. So marrying that up with the German allies is great. Now, if you go for the porcelain tower, on the other hand, I would probably recommend going for the Brits because they have a great unit shipment, which is the musketeer unit shipment and also buffs your all of your military and gives them extra HP as well. That's the passive from the Brits. So that's how I would sort of 
suggest that you go if you depending on which wonder you've gone for for h3 so you can see now i can get my first banner army i'm going to be going for the territorial army a very sort of standard one to go for most of the time you're going to be wanting to go for a combination of the territorial army and the green banner army which is the forbidden i believe apologies i I really do struggle to remember them all, but it's the green one that gives you both cav units. It gives you the iron flails and it gives you the meteor hammers. So that's kind of the two combos you want to go for. You can see I've built my market. I'm starting to get my basic market techs and I've still got a good chunk of wood here that I can use to build a second village. So that's what I'll be doing because trust me, guys, your population just goes straight through the roof. The minute you get to age three, your population goes sky high because you're going to be getting unit shipments in you've got eight arquebusiers coming in when you age up to age three and also you're going to be popping a free banner army from your summer palace as well and you're going to be wanting to train something from your blockhouse so serious population is going to be happening so i suggest that you spend that wood and get some villages down so you can see now my next card is going to be five meteor hammers. This really does depend on the situation. I've got to be honest with you guys. I'm just going to do a quick pause here. I'm going to show you the deck as it is. Here it is. So many options you can go here. I A lot of people do like to go for the 10 Arquebusiers, but the Confucian Academy is already going to give you eight. So you could go for the Changdao if there's a lot of cav. You could go for the meteor hammers if, if you know that they've got a lot of sort of light infantry. Or, which is a really good one here, is seven hand mortars. Hand mortars are definitely more of a, of, a, of a choice now because there has been a recent nerf to the meteor hammers and they don't do as much damage to artillery as they used to. So if you're against a European sieve and they're going to push you with the classic sort of two falconet push, you're going to want something to try and deal with artillery. So sometimes a first card straight off the bat can be seven hand mortars and it can be really, really effective and it can throw your opponent off as well because they may think, ah, look, I've got China here. I've got Falx. There's not much he can do. Seven hand mortars can be a great option. And one final one here is the intervention. This could be really good if you've gone for the Brit Consulate, which, has, as I mentioned, gets you the Musketeer, the red coat shipment. Very, very good. So that's another card option as well. So we can see here, all we're going to be doing is just getting our territorial army out here. We've got the five meteor hammers coming in. One thing I forgot to do that I suggest that you do, the minute you get into H3, is switch your standard army. I haven't switched my free standard army here. Make sure that you actually switch it to the green banner, which I believe is the is the forbidden army. Make sure that you switch it to that because that's, that's the most value. That's very, very expensive in food and gold. And you can see here now, I'm just going to push on poor old Napoleon here. And I'm only going to be showing you the first 10 minutes, ideally, of this build order. I don't really want to show you any more because a lot of things do change and I want to give you a rough idea. Yes, it is the forbidden army. You can see now I'm actually creating it. Two iron flails, two meteor hammers. Remember the Confucian Academy here producing the flying crow so that is pretty much it we're coming up to 10 minutes and pretty successful we've got a decent bunch of cav um meteor hammers flails arquebusiers uh chang dao and we've also got our explorer as well don't forget that you can actually muster disciples from your explorer and they can do very well against all types of units and they tank damage quite well as well and that is pretty much gonna wrap it up here in a nutshell guys we are at 10 minutes i hope you enjoyed this hope you learned a lot and of course there's many different situations different maps different sieves and there's lots of different variables but this is pretty much the go-to opening at the moment with china there is an age two option that you can do instead but we're not going to be covering it in this video we're just going to be looking at the fast fortress because it's it can be pretty easy to hold because of the blockhouse if you do get early pressure you just got to try and learn to be quite defensive and play well. But that is the only downside really with an FF, of course, is you've got to make it to H3. You make it to H3, your chances of winning significantly increase. And there we go. Right, guys, hope you enjoyed that short, snappy video for China, giving you a good basis and overview of a standard build order. I'm going to be doing more of these videos. I've already done my India one and there's way more to come. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Maybe things that you disagree with. Maybe some things that I missed out. Who the hell knows? And of course, if you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like. I'll catch you in the next video on the next stream. Catch you later, guys. Bye.